Representing a system of linear equations using a matrix can be very useful. That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. First, we'll go over how to represent a system of linear equations using several matrices. Then, we'll go over how to do it using just one. So here, of course, we've got a system of linear equations that are in standard form. So we've got all of our variables x and y on one side of the equations and all of our constants on the other side. There are three main components to representing a system of linear equations using matrices. The first is the coefficient matrix. The coefficient matrix, as the name implies, stores the coefficients of the system. This matrix will have one column for each variable in our system, in this case, one column for x and one column for y, and then we'll have one row for each equation in the system, so that's two rows in this case. Then, in the first row, first column, goes the coefficient of x that is in the first equation, that is two in this case. Then, in the first row, second column, we have the coefficient of y in the first equation, which is negative four. Then, in the second row, first column, we've got the coefficient of x in the second equation, which is one, and then in the second row, second column, we will have the coefficient of y in the second equation, which is eight. And that is our coefficient matrix for this system. You can see it's just like taking the coefficients and putting them directly into a matrix. Then what else do we need? Well, these coefficients are being multiplied by variables, so it should come as no surprise that the next thing we need is a variable matrix. The variable matrix stores the variables from our system. It has one column and then one row for each variable. Whichever variable was represented by the first column in the coefficient matrix should go in the first row of the variable matrix, so that is x in this case. And then whatever variable is represented in the second column of the coefficient matrix should go in the second row of the variable matrix. So that is our variable matrix. If we multiplied our coefficient matrix by our variable matrix, notice that we would get 2x minus 4y in the first row, which represents the first equation. And then in the second row, if we multiplied these matrices together, we would have x plus 8y, which represents the second equation. So these work together very nicely, but of course we're still missing something. We are missing our constants. So the last thing we need is a constant matrix. Of course, this stores our constants. It's got one column and then one row for each equation. In the first row, we put the constant of the first equation, which is three. And then in the second row, we have the constant of the second equation, which is negative five, and that is our constant matrix. Now we have represented this system of equations using matrices, pretty cool. And we see if we computed this matrix multiplication, this is what the equation would become. 2x minus 4y, and then in the second row we would have x plus 8y, that would be our matrix over here, and then on the right, of course, we still have our constant matrix. So this is very clearly equivalent to this system of equations. They both have the same solution. Whatever x and y values make these two equations true will also make this one equation true, because this matrix can only be equal to this matrix if 2x minus 4 equals 3, and x plus 8y equals negative five. But maybe you don't want to use three matrices to represent a system of linear equations. You might think if each column of the constant matrix is dedicated to a specific variable, then we don't really need another matrix to represent the variables. You also might think, why do we need to put the constants in a different matrix? Why can't we put all of this information into one matrix? Well, of course we can, and that's very useful. To represent this system of linear equations using one matrix, we use what's called an augmented matrix. An augmented matrix is just created by joining the columns of two separate matrices. So what we'll do is join the columns of our coefficient matrix with the column of our constant matrix. That will give us this beautiful matrix down here. First row has two, negative four from the coefficient matrix, and then from the constant matrix we have a three three at the end. Second row is one eight negative five. 
And in an augmented matrix, since these columns come from one matrix and this column comes from another, we often put a line here to separate them. This works really nicely so we can clearly see that these over here are the coefficients of x and y, and then these are the constants. And you can kind of think of this big line as an equals sign. So that is pretty neat. That's how we can represent a system of linear equations using just one matrix. The great value of this is that we can then do what are called row operations on this single matrix in order to solve the system of linear equations that it represents. We'll go over how to do that in another lesson, but just to show you what the result would look like with this matrix, it would look like this. By manipulating this one matrix that represents the system of linear equations, we would get this. The first row tells us that one times x plus zero times y is equal to 0 0.2, which just means x equals 0.2. Similarly, the second row tells us y equals negative 0.65, and that is the solution to the system. So that is pretty sweet. Before we go, let's check out one more example. We'll represent this system of linear equations using a single matrix. And I really encourage you to give it a shot on your own and then watch the rest of this lesson. So last call, three, two, one, let's get into the solution. So remember, to represent a system of linear equations using a matrix, we use what's called an augmented matrix. First, we represent the coefficients of the system. We'll have one column represent x, one column represent y, and one column represent z, because those are the three variables in this system. And you certainly don't have to write these variables at the top. You probably won't once you start doing more problems. I just like to in this lesson for clarity. Before we start writing the matrix, we should always be sure to check that our equations are in standard form. In this case, they are, so we're good to go. Going straight down the three rows of the first column, what are the coefficients of x? In the first equation, we have negative 2, then positive 3, and then positive 10. So first row, negative 2, second row, 3, third row, 10. For our second column, we'll look at the coefficients of y. In the first equation, we have a coefficient of 1, then negative 1, and then 4. So we've got 1, negative 1, 4. The third column represents z. The coefficients of z are 0 in the first equation. There is no z, so it's got a coefficient of 0. Same thing in the second equation, and then in the third equation, it's got a coefficient of 2. So 0, 0, 2. That is where the coefficient matrix stops, but we're joining it with the constant matrix, so we'll just draw that line to separate them. The constant of the first equation is negative 4. Second equation is positive 2. And then the constant of the third equation is positive 10. And that is our augmented matrix that represents this system of linear equations. So it's pretty sweet, and I don't think it's all that tricky. Hopefully after watching this lesson, you agree. So I hope this video helped you understand how to represent a system of linear equations as a matrix. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Smash.